this trail apparently has it out for me. This trail has tried to kill me twice. So we're gonna do something a little different this week. I've taken a number of vacations to a number of different places with, you know, my wife, with my friends growing up, my family when I was younger, but we've only been showing the good times. So I thought I might throw this out here as a, a segment I might do every now and then that I'm gonna refer to as uh, misadventures while traveling. So we took a trip to Colorado, we being my dad and I. There are some trails near Platora Dam uh, there's the Three Forks Trail, and that leads into uh, Azura Trail and heads up to uh, Blue Lake. Now, this trail has, in my opinion, tried to kill me twice. Now, <laughs> what I mean by that is, so the first time we went up this trail, it was probably 2015, and we <laughs> got all the way up there. It's, it's a long, long gravel road to get there. It's, it's, you gotta take it very slow because there's some lot, a lot of sharp rocks that could potentially, you know, puncture your tires. And it's, it's a very narrow road to get up to the trailhead. But, you know, we took the long drive, got there, and, you know, we're, we're ready to go. We got all our gear on and stuff's looking great. It's, it's, it's a gorgeous view. The weather feels nice. And, you know, we, we start hiking. We're, we're heading down the trail and, you know, just enjoying our time. Well, <laughs> We quickly found out that we're probably not geared for the intermediate to difficult trails in terms of what our current fitness levels were at that time, because there were a lot of breaks there. We, we sat down, had to take a breather, and we, we took those as opportunities to kind of enjoy our surroundings, but it was, it was a lot more breaks than I, I thought we would need. But if you think about it, not only was our fitness levels probably not up to snuff but we were in the Colorado mountains and we're used to Kansas elevation levels so not only is it a fitness thing it's a I can't breathe a kind of thing because the the oxygen at that level was a uh, quite different but we, we kept pushing forward we did realize along the way that we probably also overpacked a bit when it comes to bringing a change of clothes and the change of clothes we brought were actually fairly heavy and we didn't do that right uh, in terms of getting lighter clothes to carry on our backs. <laughs> there was also my issue that I was adamant I wanted to bring these little nut and berry snack bars, which uh, carrying, you know, 12 to 24 of those suckers, it's pretty heavy <laughs> when you think about it, as opposed to like the hydrated food that you'll make later. But I'm glad I did bring those uh, because we got closer and closer to the campground for the first night. And originally, my dad was the one slowing us down a little bit more, but he was also carrying the, the uh, bear canister with uh, all of our food in it. Uh, so he had some extra weight on his back. Eventually, I was like, hey, you know, let's start on my pack. You know, we've gone about halfway or so. And you know, let's lighten your load and I'll take it because I'm, you know, the, the, the young strapping lad, you know, I've, <laughs> I've got some, uh, he's got some years on me. So I, I felt like maybe I could do this and kind of get us to the finish line. Well, not too long into it, I started to feel the brunt of the weight of that pack and lots of, you know, me slowing down and just like staring at the, the sky and while the surroundings were gorgeous, you got the trees and the mountains, we, we, we saw some wildlife. I was, I was definitely running on fumes. We even got to the point that our campground was just over this next little hill and that's where we were going to be camping. And I still had to stop and just stand there for a good five to 10 minutes, not moving. Cause it was just, the, the packs were too heavy. We, we, we learned that just, we, we needed to be more careful with that. Well, we got to the campground, got everything all set up, finally time to relax, right? Well, we go to make dinner because we did have some dehydrated meals and we go to make dinner and we realize that the uh, gas canister, the, the fuel that was meant to uh, run his little camping stove had at some point slightly opened and apparently leaked all the fuel out. No idea if that happened, you know, before we got there, during the hike, or maybe he just thought there's more fuel than he had. 
but regardless, we had uh, enough fuel to cook dinner that one night. And <laughs> that meant the remaining three or four days of this trip, we would not be able to cook any food <laughs> because we had no fuel. So we had to have a, a discussion that evening and just decided, you know what, you know, we'll, we'll go into our, our tents because we each brought our own. We'll sleep for the night and we'll make a decision in the morning as to what we're going to do. Do we, we push on and just kind of live on some of the stuff that I had brought that wasn't dehydrated or do we feel that we need to go back? Well, next morning we had just a little bit of fuel left and we made some hot chocolate and had to make the decisions like, there's no way that we can survive the remaining you know, three nights, three days and nights with just a handful of bars that I brought and a, a bag of beef jerky that he had brought that he made at home. I mean, we, we could have finished the trail. We would have just been starving and probably would have lost several pounds and, you know, maybe been in the right fitness level by the end of the hike. But it was like, no, we, we, we did this wrong. We need to go back. So we, you know, hiked all the way back, it took, took a while, not as, bad going downhill as it was going uphill. So we, we, we got back sooner than it took us to get there the first time, but we're just, we chalked this up to a loss. You know, we didn't make it. We're going to try this again another time. We'll, we'll pack lighter. We'll make sure we absolutely have uh, fuel for our food and we'll, we'll just try this another time. So flash forward to 2020. Um, we already know that that's a, a pivotal, pivotal year that a lot of us are going to remember due to COVID and the, the pandemic and everything that's going on. But we took this as a chance to like, let's, we're, we're going to tackle this again. We're going to, we're going to be able to make it all the way up to Blue Lake and we're going to have a great time, you know, backpacking. We, we were very careful with what we had in our packs. We made sure we had fuel. We have the plenty of dehydrated food. We didn't overpack on the clothes to keep the packs lighter. Uh, we did go in a different month. I don't remember the exact months that we went, but I do recall the first time that we went, it was like t-shirt weather, um, maybe a light jacket. And the second time we went, it was, uh, closer to the winter months, but we did have sleeping bags and tents that were rated for very low temperatures, but we had checked the weather before we went and it was going to get down to like, I don't know, 35, 40. I mean, nothing. I mean, it's, it's, it's cold, but you know, not that bad when it comes to the gear that we were packing and we were, you know, wearing jackets and, you know, I had a beanie on and made sure that we were ready for the weather, but also ready to make sure we had food. You would think that with this better preparation that we were going to, you know, make it this time, we're going to survive We're we're good. But no, this, this trail apparently has it out for me. Uh, at least in my opinion, because once again, it was like, you know what? I, I, I wasn't able to starve you out the first time, uh, but I've got a new plan for you this second time around. So I mentioned that the gravel road to get up there uh, is very skinny and it has a lot of sharp rocks. Well, my dad made the wonderful choice that, you know, he needed to replace his tires. His tires were getting a little bald on the tread and it, it, it they needed replacing. But there was a long drive we were taking all the way up to Colorado, and he would rather put all those miles on the tires that he was planning to replace and then get brand new fresh ones when he gets back. Well, <laughs> I'm sure some of us can see where this is going, but on the way up to the trailhead, we blew a tire because those sharp rocks and, you know, these tires, that they, they weren't bald, but the tread was definitely getting low and needed to replace, blew one of the tires. Well, this was the first time he'd ever had to change a tire on this truck. Uh, my dad knows quite a bit about cars, but he's never had to do it with this truck. So he had a hell of a time trying to figure out how to get the tire that's under the bed to lower down so that we can uh, switch the tires out. We, we knew where the hole was. We were putting the, the cranks in there to turn. But come to find out, since we could not see in there, uh, we were putting the crank in backwards. We assumed it needed to like slip onto something, grab it and turn that, but it was actually slip in or maybe it was the other way around. I don't remember, but either way we were doing it backwards. It wasn't until somebody, uh, came by, was driving down the trail and saw that, you know, they had a similar truck and just let us know like, Hey, you need some help. And we told them that we're having all these trouble trying to get the tire out. 
and eventually they're oh yeah no it works this way and we got the tire and like oh cool perfect and we got tire all changed up and headed up to the trailhead we took an extra precaution beyond that as well because we knew last time we we drove there we got to the trailhead immediately got our gear on and went and we're having uh, not so much like full altitude sickness, but definitely some symptoms of it because, you know, we're used to Kansas level versus the higher uh, elevation in the Colorado mountains. And what we did is, you know, we got to the trailhead and we decided to just sleep in the truck for the night. Get acclimated to that level of oxygen before we hit the trailhead. Uh, <laughs> being over six feet myself, it was not comfortable at all, but we made it. So... Next day starts very similar to the first time in the sense that we got all our gear ready. We're, we're, we're heading up the trail. We were not needing to take as many breaks because with the, the cooler weather, it kept you know our bodies cooler as well. And so we were able to keep moving, but we were taking time to slow down, take videos, take pictures, kind of enjoy the surroundings. Um, we met some people that were heading out as we were heading in and they're like, hey, you, you know, there's a, there's some snow and stuff coming, right? And we're like, yeah, we know it's supposed to get into, you know, the 30s and everything. There's maybe a little bit of snow, but it's, it's not going to be anything major. Uh, so like, okay. And so they kept going. And then we walked by eventually another set of people that are leaving the trail that had already been up to the lake. Kind of had the same conversation. You know, hey, you know, there's snow and everything coming, right? It's like, oh, yeah, no, we know about it. We've, we've got gear for it. We're all good. Well, while we're going down this trail... Way down in the valley, there's a whole herd of cattle, and there's a a cowboy out there on horse, you know, bringing the cattle out of uh, up on the mountains and the trees, herding them down into the valley and wherever they're heading after that. Eventually, uh, he rode up to us. He went ahead and asked us if we saw any cattle anywhere, and uh, we noted a couple of places we saw some, so he could round them up. But then he brought up the same thing. Like, hey, you you know there's some snow and everything coming tonight. You guys heading up the mountain? And we're like, yeah, you know, we're, it's going to be all right. You know, we we, we packed for this. We're, we we paid attention to the weather. We checked it the, the day before we drove up. We know what it's going to be. And that's when he let us know, uh, yeah, the weather forecast changed that morning. Uh, it's no longer going to be just like, you know, just a little bit of a dusting and me being in the 30s and then melt off. No, it's supposed to get down into the single digits, and there we're expecting a few feet of snow to hit. And that was definitely not <laughs> the forecast we were aware of. And we immediately had to be like, okay, um, we're not geared up to be in that level of snow. And moving through snow that's up above your knees, trying to walk through that to get back out, if we had made it all the way up to the trailhead or all the way up to the campground and woke up with that much snow, I don't know what would have happened. Like the, the temperatures were going to be well below what our gear was rated for and that much snow trying to, to get out of there and back to the vehicle to drive home. And that's assuming the vehicle could even drive out of there with that much snow. So <laughs> I look at it as, you know, this cowboy deciding to come up and talk to us potentially saved my life. I don't know if we would have made it out of there or if we would have ended up freezing to death. I have no idea. Uh, I'm just very lucky that he decided to come and talk to us. And so we made like, we put our gear down. We walked a little bit farther up the trail just to kind of see a little bit of the, of the beauty of, of everything that was around us before grabbing our packs and coming back and just we're like, you know what? I'm going to chalk this up to another loss. This trail clearly doesn't like us. <laughs> uh, but the story doesn't stop there. I'm just herding cattle. What are you doing? I'm herding cattle too. <laughs> <laughs> we get back to the car, we get all our gear in there, and we ended up actually helping the cowboy because he, he had some, he had a, a, a mama cow and her calf that he was trying to get into a truck to take somewhere. So we we're kind of helping with his horse and everything to get the cow up there because they had to get the calf on there and then the mom would just follow. Uh, so we helped with that a little bit, and then after he was on his way, we got our gear all packed up, got in the truck, and we're leaving. On the way back down the mountain, on that gravel road again, another tire blew. And we didn't have another spare. And we knew this, you know, big snowstorm was heading in. And 
where we were was about 45 minutes to an hour from what I'll call civilization. Like the, the, the closest town was 45 minutes to an hour away by car. Uh, there's no way we're going to be able to walk there to get help and back in time. But once again, we were very lucky. Uh, a vehicle was driving by us and passed us on the, the road. And we popped right back in the truck and like gunned it to kind of catch up with them driving on, you know, a flat tire running along the rim a little bit. And we're able to, you know, honk the horn and get them to slow down and essentially let them know that, hey, we're, we're, we're kind of screwed here. We have uh, no spare tires. Is there any way there's something you guys can do to help us? The guy was incredibly kind. What he did is he had us get in his truck with him uh, and drove down to where they were camping and one of the little cabins and everything they had to drop his friend off and then drove us all the way to town and then all the way back. So we drove all the way to town. Then we had to be after, you know, an hour to get there. We had to be in town for like another 45 minutes to an hour as they were putting a new tire on the rim we had uh, that we brought with us. And then he was able to drive us all the way back to the truck. By that point, the snow was already coming down and there were several inches on the ground as we were trying to get that tire traded out. And the guy was nice enough. He stayed there, he waited to make sure that we we're going to be okay. I he even let me take a picture of him because I was like, dude, you really saved us here. So, but once we got back on the, in the truck and started moving, we made sure to go very, very slow because, you know, we don't have another spare tire again. So if we popped a, a third, we'd have to go all the way back to town and back and don't know if we'd make it before the storm. So the guy that, you know, was with us, he stayed with us and kind of, we both drove down the trail all the way back down to the campground where uh, he, you know, stopped and went back to his cabin. We, we thanked them. We gave them a little bit of cash, like, thank you so much for helping us. And by that point we were past most of the gravel. So we, we got back on the road to get out of there and it, it was, couldn't have been better timing because by that point, uh, we were trying to get out of town and the storm hit. It was dark. There was so much flurries going on that you couldn't see, but maybe a foot past the hood of your car. We're in areas that don't have, sh you know, street lights and, you know, big lamps everywhere. So it's pitch black and we're trying to make it past this storm to get to a hotel to sleep for the night. And at the same time, where we were, we had like no signal. So I'm like on my phone, moving the map around or the streets we're on, trying to figure out you know, ways to get us to a town to be able to get to a hotel. And we were probably driving in that going like, you know, 15, 20 miles an hour for a few hours before we finally got to a town that had a hotel. But that hotel was completely booked because everybody saw the snow coming and immediately just went to the closest hotel. And so we fueled up, we got a couple of snacks from the, the gas station and had to just get back on the road again and continue on. By this point, we were luckily, luckily past the good big chunk of it where we couldn't see much. We could see a little farther down the road. And so we're like, you know what? It's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll go to the next town and be able to get a hotel there. But thanks to that cowboy and thanks to uh, the guy that drove us, drove past us on the road, uh, I'm here to tell this story. And I'm honestly not sure if I would be if not for them. So I'm I'm very thankful we ran into them, but it also creates a, a fun story as to vacation gone wrong. So let me know if you like this style of me kind of giving some of the background of stuff that's happened on some of my journeys, uh, some of the vacations that went bad. Uh, and if so, I'll, I'll, I'll bring more like this to you, but anything else, just let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, subscribe, <laughs> and we'll see you next time.